Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Revisiting MOSFET Push-Pull Gate Driver. Now, the classical way of boosting a drive to a gate of a MOSFET or IGBT is using a Push-Pull BJT transistors, NPN and PNP, driven by, say, through a driver. And then we have two resistors, one for turn on and one for turn off. Usually we like to have the turn off to be faster, so R2 is going to be smaller than R1. We have then a Schottky diode here to separate between these two paths. Now, the BJT push-pull does have, though, some disadvantages, some deficiencies, and in particular, there is a problem of voltage drops that are shown here. First of all, one has to recognize that these transistors are not in a saturation region and that they are operating in a linear region, so there is a voltage drop across them, which is typically like one volt or a little bit lower than that. And then we have the drop of the diode, and consequently there is a voltage drop here, which is not that good because if we have this uh, so-called Miller spike, due to a DVDT at the drain. There is a current coming through this CGD capacitor passing through here, and we might have here a spike, a voltage spike, which is riding on these voltage drops, and consequently the transistor might actually enter into conduction. So this is one of the disadvantages of the transistor, the BJT transistor push-pull buffer. There is another way, and that is to use two MOSFET, P-channel and N-channel, in a configuration that is shown here, but it does have its own problems. In particular, when you are in between VCC and ground, the two transistor might conduct because the threshold of the N-channel is, let's say, here, of the P-channel is here, so when you are in between, the two transistor will conduct, consequently you're going to have a shoot through, a high current passing through, which is not so good, in fact it actually could be very bad because the RDS on of the transistor are low and therefore you might have a very high current passing through here. And yet we know that commercial gate drivers do use MOSFET push-pull in this configuration. And also we know that there is a logic family, the CMOS family, which has exactly the same configuration. Now the key is that if the transition here is very fast, then the time of this uh, shoot through is very short, and you can actually tolerate it in, to some extent. But there is another way, which I am now showing in this presentation. And that is, for this particular case, of driving a gate of a MOSFET or IGBT, we usually want to use two resistors. So if we have a configuration which looks like that, that if we don't have a connection here, but rather we go through these two resistors, one for turn on and one for turn off, then the situation is not that severe. For example, if you look at the worst case, suppose there is no transistor here, and you just have a transition between turn on and off here, this uh, input is toggling between zero and maximum voltage, you will have a shoot through, but the current that will develop will be in the order of magnitude of the current that you are feeding to the gate. Because these are the same resistors which are used to limit the current to the gate, and consequently, the, the magnitude of this current is not very high. Now, if the transition is short, then the duration of this extra parasitic, you might say, current will be very short and maybe the penalty will not be that severe. And this is what I'm going to show that in fact this is the case. Now, if I look in the case of there is a transistor, the situation is even much better than that. Because if you have a transistor, it has an input capacitance to the gate. And consequently, for example, if the voltage is zero volt low, 
and you want to go too high, then it takes time for the voltage here at the gate to drop. So as long as this is zero, you have the same current as you would have with the regular driver. Now as long as it's zero here or it's close to zero, the current here is very small. Meanwhile, the transition is over and this transistor is on and this is off and that's the end of the story. So in this case, with a input capacitance, the situation is actually much better. Same thing goes when, say, you are at a high voltage here, VCC, you like to go too low. Again, once you have the transition, the, this transistor will start conducting the regular current. This, as long as VCC does not change much, the voltage drop here is small, so the extra current, the parasitic or the penalty that you have is not that much. So you can say that if the rise and fall time here is shorter than the discharge and charge of the gate, then you are in good shape and the extra current that you'll have is probably very small. So I've set up to test this hypothesis by simulation. So what I have here is a capacitor which emulates a sort of a medium size uh, transistor. I've added a 30 nano Henry inductance here and there is a 10 ohm here and 2 ohms here. This is for the turn off and this is for the turn on. And I'm assuming at this stage a 100 nanosecond rise and fall time for the drive of these transistors. And here is what I'm getting. This is the current through the resistors. That is this current and this current. This is the upper one, this is the lower one. And this is the voltage of the capacitor. Zooming in, I can see this is the regular current. This, this, and this. And this is the parasitic. This is the extra, the penalty that we are getting due to the fact that we are using this uh, configuration. And then if I go even deeper, and I can see that here is the extra current, and this is the normal current. As you can see, the added current is very small, okay? It's, it's only a very a small fraction of the actual current. So the added dissipation of the driver will be really very small. Now let's have a look at another case I have here one microfarad, it's a, like a very large uh, transistor, it could be like a module of an IGBT. I've put here a 2 ohm, 0.5 ohm, and here it is again. This is one resistor, another resistor, and this is the capacitor voltage. Here again, I see these are the normal current, and these are the extra current, and going even deeper into the zoom, I see again that the contribution here is small as compared to the actual useful current that you'll have in any case. In our world, this is the normal and this is the added current. To further probe this option, I have also run a simulation with a transistor. Now I didn't have a transistor of a very high power, a very high current, so I've used a moderate size transistor, this is this one and then multiplied the input current by this dependent current source. So it looks as if you have like 46 transistors like that, rather than this single one, because this current here to the input is 45 times uh, the current here, so a total of 46. So it's a pretty large transistor, and I've adjusted it so that it will be about one microfarad total gate capacitance, equivalent capacitance. And here is what I'm getting, very similar. Again, one resistor, the other resistor, zooming in, I got the same thing. And even farther, I see again that this is not that much. This is really not that much as compared to the actual current. In this case, I see very nicely the Miller Plateau and in which the voltage is uh, lock to the threshold, about the threshold voltage, uh, which is very typical, of course. 
So there's nothing special here, different from what we are used to, except for this extra current due to this uh, path that we have between the two transistors. Then I've changed the rise and fall time to 300 nanosecond rather than 100 nanosecond. This is uh, very large. Usually you will not expect that slow transition, but just for the sake of testing, I've changed it to the 300 nanosecond. Again, this is the transistor, 45 times the current to the single unit. And here is what I'm getting, very, very similar. It's uh, again, uh, there is somewhat of a larger duration here, but again, this is compared to the total current or the regular current is really very small. To test the actual numerical value of this extra current, I've added here a integrator. This is a one farad capacitor and I'm pumping in the current which is duplicating the current here, okay? So this is the total current getting into the combined transistor here and then I'm integrating it to get actually the charge, okay? So this is the, the voltage here is the total charge that is fed to this uh, assembly of transistors. And here is what I'm getting. Here I get the current, this is the current, this is the extra current due to this configuration. Now the main charge here is 15 microcoulomb. This is not surprising because we have a one microfarad equivalent capacitance and we have 15 volts, so it's a 15 microcoulomb charge to the main gate capacitance. And then we have this extra, which we barely can see here. So I've zoomed in and here it is. And it is this 0.66 microcoulomb as compared to the 15. So it is about say 5%. So the penalty is 5% more current, more dissipation, which is rather small if indeed you'd like to use this configuration. Now I've also tested the case in which there is practically no inductance. Originally I ran the simulation with 30 nano Henry. In this case I've just made it uh, pico Henry so it doesn't do anything. And then ran it the same thing. Again it's a very slow drive here, th 300 nanosecond. And uh, we have two ohms, 0.5 ohms. So here it is, and you can see that again, we see this uh, change here. This is the main change, again 15 uh, microcoulomb. And this is the extra current that we have causing this extra charge. And when I zoom at it, I see that this is about 0.55 microcoulomb, which is again like something like 5%. So it turns out that at least for the simulation that I've run, for the cases that I've examined, which I kind of uh, covering quite a bit of a range, the penalty is about 5%, which is really not that much. So the conclusion here is that the overhead loss of a MOSFET push-pull, it should be pull, gate driver with two transistor is really small. And if you'd like this configuration, and it's very nice to have RDS on rather than the voltage drop of a BJT, then you can see that the penalty is not that much. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.